This is the biography of a city, a metropolitan area of more than 200,000, situated on the deep water of the Delaware River, and the capital city of one of the most important industrial and agricultural states in the nation. This is the biography of Trenton, New Jersey, strategically located in the center of one of the greatest concentrations of people, wealth, and industry in the world. This biography of a city starts with its role in government, for Trenton is not only the capital of New Jersey, but for several months in 1784, it was the capital of the United States. Here, thousands of state employees are engaged in providing New Jersey's people with the many services vital to their well-being. But unlike many capital cities, government is not the only important industry in Trenton. Flashing from a bridge over the Delaware, travelers see a brilliantly illuminated sign. Trenton makes, the world takes. Internationally known, this famous slogan sums up the city's industrial leadership and explains why Trenton has grown to be the bustling, prosperous city that it is today. Trenton's manufacturing plants provide employment to thousands of the area's men and women and Trenton-made products are known and used around the globe. The city's widely diversified production supplies people throughout the world with a variety of both consumer and industrial products. When travelers see such famous bridges as San Francisco's Golden Gate and others in any number of locations throughout the world, or see great bridges under construction, they're looking at materials marked made in Trenton materials manufactured and processed with the know-how and skill developed by generations of Trentonians. Trenton has long been famous for its fine china, and distinguished visitors to world capitals, including our own White House, dine at tables set with fine china made in Trenton. Turbines, motors, and other units made in Trenton propel ships of every size, flying the seven seas, carrying passengers and cargoes to places near and far away. These are only a few Trenton products that represent an important contribution to our various defenses. And just before this car left an assembly line, it was fitted with hardware designed, developed, and manufactured in Trenton. Trenton's impressive skyline is a panorama of buildings, parks, factories, apartment houses, and hotels. The skyline is dominated by the beautiful Golden Dome of the state capitol. It is surrounded by a complex of impressive state office buildings, which, like office buildings everywhere, need to be expanded to meet ever-increasing demands for space. When the long-range plans for construction are completed, New Jersey's government buildings will rank among the finest, most modern, and most efficient anywhere. The seal of New Jersey's Department of Agriculture symbolizes the fact that the state is one of the leading producers of farm products, which has earned it the title of the Garden State. In Trenton, where they work in modern, completely equipped laboratories, agricultural experts seek constantly to find new and better ways of maintaining the high productivity that New Jersey farmers enjoy. Among the many new state buildings either completed or under construction in Trenton are those of the Cultural Center. The center includes an excellent state library, a state museum, a fine planetarium, a large auditorium, and other cultural facilities. The modern State Highway Department office building houses engineers and planners who've made the New Jersey system of highways one of the nation's finest, men who've been responsible for the construction of the Garden State Parkway and the New Jersey Turnpike, two important links in the country's transportation system. But while these two great highways make Trenton readily accessible to anywhere USA, the smaller roads into and out of the city are equally meaningful and important to those who live and work in the greater Trenton area.
They make it possible for hundreds of factories, stores, and other businesses to prosper, both in the city itself and on its outskirts. They make it possible for people to commute to and from the city to produce Trenton's tremendous purchasing power. This large plant employing thousands and producing a wide variety of automobile hardware parts and components is located in an industrial suburb, as is this modern plant of an internationally known manufacturer of plumbing and heating equipment. Pumps in a variety of sizes and serving many purposes are manufactured in this plant for an international market. Skilled craftsmen for more than a hundred years have made the name of Trenton synonymous with pottery and fine china. A tour of these industries is a richly rewarding experience as the visitor sees true artisans at work on some of the delicate hand operations still being carried on in a world of automation. The production of automotive batteries is in marked contrast to the handcrafting of delicate China. But it is this contrast that makes the biography of this city so interesting. A chapter could be written about what goes on behind the scenes of each of the widely diversified Trenton-made products. There's a whole story in itself about Trenton-made brake lining about the design, development, and manufacturing of Trenton-made floor coverings. About the highly automated business of making paper boxes. About what Trenton is contributing to the ever-expanding world of plastics. About the role that Trenton-made refrigerated display cases play in attractive food markets and about Trenton-made parachutes in the nation's defense program. A further reason for Trenton's industrial leadership is the city's location and unsurpassed transportation facilities. Midway between New York and Philadelphia, the city is within a few hours of every major city on the East Coast, over limited access roads and highways. Trucks of every size, many of them assembled or manufactured in the Trenton area, carry commodities of every description to market. Trenton is an important point on the main lines of two major railroads, with fast, frequent passenger and freight services to Philadelphia, New York, and points beyond. Modern electronic equipment, operated by trained, experienced personnel, classify and quickly dispatch freight of every kind, wherever and whenever it's destined. Mercer County Airport is Trenton's air gateway to the world. Through it, airborne passengers and freight can get connecting flights with major transcontinental and overseas airlines. Trenton's air service adds the important words fast and dependable to Trenton's excellent transportation facilities. Many years before railroads and hard surfaced highways, the Great mm -hmm. Delaware River was an important artery in the city's bid for leadership in commerce and industry. With current dredging operations, Trenton's busy marine terminal will offer direct, fast and economical access to the sea. Trenton's educational facilities are the finest. In addition to public and parochial schools, the city boasts a number of specialized institutions. Teaching certificates from New Jersey State College at Trenton are universally accepted. Thousands of businessmen and women gain their knowledge at Ryder College, situated on a beautiful new campus just outside Trenton. The school is widely known for its high academic standards and practical curricula. New Jersey's School for the Deaf is situated in park-like surroundings. In an atmosphere suggestive of a fine preparatory school, youngsters receive an excellent education in spite of impaired or lost hearing. Under the guidance of specially trained teachers, 
boys and girls are prepared vocationally and psychologically to become useful citizens of the community. Just north of Trenton is a different kind of school, a school where future New Jersey State Police receive their training. Here at the State Police Academy, the young men are put through a rigorous program of physical and mental training. When a man dons the smart blue and gold uniform of the New Jersey State Police, he knows he's had the finest and most thorough preparation for his career. In spite of a high degree of industrialization, Trenton is a city of homes. Trim, well-kept houses on broad, tree-lined streets. And large, modern apartment houses offer comfortable living to suit every taste and pocketbook. And in Trenton, people of all faiths can find a house of worship of their choice. Close to the heart of the downtown area and easily accessible from any part of the city are public parks with attractions for all. Playgrounds and swimming pools offer an abundance of pleasure. and small fry delight in the antics of the inhabitants of the zoo in Cadwallader Park. Visits to the city's museums and libraries are enriching experiences. And there is ample space and opportunity for adult outdoor sports. The city's several public and private golf courses include Mountain View, which is operated by Mercer County. Yes, life in Trenton is good, and it can be further enriched in a variety of leisure time pursuits. For example, at Trenton's War Memorial, as a member of the city's famed symphony orchestra, or on the other side of the footlights, listening to the finest instrumentalists, soloists, and other artists. Trenton is steeped in history, and deeply devoted to preserving its rich Revolutionary War background. A Trenton landmark is the lofty monument that commemorates the Battle of Trenton, a battle that turned the tide of war and led to success in our struggle for independence. From atop the monument, visitors enjoy a spectacular panoramic view of the city and the surrounding area. A short distance up the river from Trenton is Washington Crossing State Park an area that has been set aside to mark the point where Washington and his men made their famous crossing. A never-ending source of delight to young and old is the picture story of the bitter cold night in December of 1776, the story of how Washington crossed the Delaware, how, after holding a ragged army together in spite of great obstacles, the father of our country surprised a force of Hessians in Trenton on Christmas night and how the resounding victory he won revived the courage of his men and gave renewed hope to the colonies. The original McConkey Ferry House nearby is steeped in tradition and historic lore. A mecca for visitors from all over the country, the ferry house and its grounds are preserved as they were in revolutionary days. In the heart of the city, the old barracks built 20 years before the revolution are a reminder that many landmarks in the Trenton area go back even further in time. Another splendid example of pre-revolutionary points of interest is the home of William Trent, who planned the city and called it Trent Town. Built in 1719, this beautiful brick mansion is one of the finest remaining examples of early American architecture. With its lovely courtyard still preserved, it has a unique attraction for all who visit it. Inside, the house is just as it was more than 50 years before the revolution. The original stairways and floorboards are still intact, and the fireplaces are still in good condition. Over the years, the house has been occupied by state governors and other prominent people, including Lewis Morris, the colonial governor of New Jersey. 
It is difficult to believe that this lovely home with its air of quiet dignity is in the center of a busy modern city. Yet with the hustle and bustle all around it, the building and grounds still retain their peace and charm, just as they did when William Trent built his home at what was then called the Falls of the Delaware. A high spot of any tour is the Friends Meeting House, a solid reminder that Trenton's first settlers were Quakers, who arrived in the city in 1679. Another point of interest is the old Masonic Temple, which was built in 1793 and contains a wonderful museum of early Americana. The first Presbyterian church was one of the city's first houses of worship and today is the capital church of the Senate of New Jersey. It was in the Douglas House where General Washington and his staff held their council of war following the Second Battle of Trenton that the decision was made to escape Cornwallis Trap and march to Princeton. From William Trent's small town at the falls of the Delaware, Trenton grew as the years passed. Slowly at first, then with giant steps as the Industrial Revolution began. Through the inventiveness, the ingenuity, the imagination, and the business ability of its citizens, the city soon took a leading position in commerce and industry. A maze of tracks was laid to accommodate the new and popular trolley cars. And this was the era when Trenton was coming into its own. And to meet the demands of ever-expanding industry, new banks had to be established. Banks like Trenton Trust, which was first housed in this old building. Trenton is filled with reminders of the past. But cities, like people, can't stand still. So what about the future in this biography of a city? What is happening in the area adjoining the old Trent House is happening all over Trenton. Slums, dilapidated houses, and commercial properties are coming down and being replaced with modern buildings. Public and privately owned construction projects are symbolic of the continuing growth of the city. In many cases, the city is building its future on the solid foundations of its past. One example is the present home of the Trenton Trust Company, a far cry from the original building that housed on opening day just three employees and served only five customers. Just as buildings must change to meet the demands of the future, so must ways of doing business keep pace with changing times. Today, Trenton Trust is equipped with every available machine and technique for serving the financial needs of the city. Time lock vaults protect securities and other valuables. Data processing and automatic check sorters perform these operations accurately and almost instantaneously. Modern, efficient branch offices bring all the bank's facilities to suburban customers. New departments are constantly being added for the convenience of the public. New techniques in communication speed the conduct of international business for bank president Mary G. Roebling as she utilizes the Telstar satellite which was conceived and developed in New Jersey to talk directly to International Chamber of Commerce President Dr. Hans Boden in Frankfurt, Germany. On behalf of the International Chamber of Commerce, I send you my warmest congratulations to the bankers of America assembled today as guests of the Trenton Trust Company. In this then has been the biography of a city a big, busy, progressive city that's proud of its craftsmanship. Proud of its heavy industries. Proud of its versatility of products. Proud of its transportation facilities. Proud of its educational standards and opportunities. Proud of its cultural facilities. 
and proud to be the capital of its state. But most of all, Trenton is proud of its people, its homes and its houses of worship, proud of itself as a community. This is Trenton today, a city with a rich heritage of its nation's history and a future bright with promise. Perhaps the most significant chapters in Trenton's biography are yet to be written, chapters that will be of vital importance to all who depend on the city for their well-being.